Hello there, Jose Rodriguez back again. I'm going to finally get into some of the aspects of printing on the Canon Pixma Pro 10. Now, for those of you who do not have any kind of background or experience using color management, I'm going to show you the simplest way to print, and that is through any utility, whatever you may have. I'm going to take you to the driver. We'll go ahead and open up the Pro 10 driver. And as long as I can find it in this uh, massive army of mine. Here we go. We're going to hit Printing Preferences. Now this will take you directly to the main driver window. This is what you will be shown if you are using Windows. I apologize to the Mac users. I do not use Mac. I find it uh, having a lot of problems with driver incompatibilities sometimes the printer companies do not issue out a brand new version of a driver for a specific printer every time the mac os is updates and it's just a problem for me and so i stick with the older windows 7 at least i can access every single one of my printers without any problem and so that's really the only reason not because one is better than the other okay so don't take that personal all right so here we are in the Pro 10 series, I'm using the XPS, and that is just simply for uh, allowing you to use 16-bit images. The Mac automatically does that for you, so that's a plus for Mac users. And so basically, I have here a bunch of preliminary choices. Photo printing, of course, if I was just printing a document, that I would, I would then choose standard. But of course, I'm a photo printer, so I will stick to photo. Business document, paper saving, I don't care about any of those other choices except for photo printing. And you know you're doing photo printing, you're presented by this little thumbnail of a beautiful butterfly drinking nectar out of a sweet flower. Okay, so we are in photo printing. Now my next choice is to either go borderless or not. I will remove that. I will then pick my paper and I have a ton of this photo paper pro luster. So we'll choose that. I'll go ahead and pick high. The reason you would pick high for anything with a sheen is because there's a much lower rate of dot gain. If you were printing on matte, you might want to use a slightly lower quality. That makes no sense at all when you hear it, but it makes a lot of sense when you finally see your prints. Matte paper has higher dot gain, so you really don't need as many dots per pixel. In other words, the printing resolution can be a little bit coarser because they're going to blend anyway. So. That's the subject of another video though, so we'll delve into that at some other time. So I'm going to go ahead and pick letter size, which is what I happen to have. I'm going to print off of the rear tray. Now, normally that would be all you would have to do. You would hit apply and that would save those settings for you. So we're going to go ahead and send that print and then the print emerges and lo and behold, it's a little bit too dark, a little bit too light. Or the color isn't quite right so then you would have to go into manual color adjustment and you will be presented then by this window and this is where you can actually adjust your color and your intensity and contrast so if you want to just overall increase the brightness a little bit you would click on light and as you can see I don't know if you saw here what happened go back to normal so you'll see it's a little bit darker and dark is even darker so you can make a global adjustment depending on what your photograph looked like when it emerged out of the printer and you viewed it under the correct lighting conditions and that's daylight. I like to look at my photos through a north facing window during the midday and that's really the most appropriate lighting that you can use. You can use special viewing light bulbs to view your photos with and you know that's up to you a lot of the professional studios have actually viewing booths that are lit with the correct light the correct color temperature light source and intensity all right so let's just say you look at your print and it's a little bit too light so you could do a global adjustment make it darker and then go ahead and do another test print and that might get you there say you want a little bit more contrast you would add more contrast notice what's happening here as i do that more contrasty less contrasty all right more color intensity that means actual saturation okay so your actual brightness is handled here and you only have three adjustments folks so you do not have too much that you can do in other words there are no in-between settings it's either normal light or dark 
All right, so now let's do the color adjustments. Say your print looks a little bit cyanish. So that means you have to add some of the opposite color, which is red. Notice what's happening to the colors over here. Keep an eye over here as I move the slider. So say it is a little bit cyanish looking, so you would then add red or actually subtract cyan. Same thing with magenta. The opposite of magenta is green. That's magenta. Say you get a print that looks like this, you would then subtract magenta. And you do it in gradual amounts. You do not want to go making ridiculously large adjustments because you may be at this all day long then if you do that. And remember, it might be a combination of two of these colors. So it's very difficult to do that in this manner unless you're really experienced with your so-called color wheel and how colors work together, what is the opposite of one color or the so-called complementary color of, say, green, that would be magenta, blue, that would be yellow, and vice versa. All right, so that would be it. That's how you would print using just basically manual process. So now let's just say that you have graduated yourself over to Photoshop. Let's go ahead and open Photoshop. And remember, folks, uh, this is assuming, of course, that you have a perfect nozzle check and you have already aligned your print head. You're working with OEM cartridges, in other words, using OEM inks. I will talk about that in a later video about your choices that you do have for the Pro 10 and how I am approaching this. Okay, let's go ahead and open up an image. And I just have a few quickie pictures here. How about this one of my little grandson at the Great Falls, Virginia Museum? We'll go ahead and crop that. I have it for 4 to 6 ratio. And so we'll go ahead and work with this. Now, I'm not going to make any adjustments whatsoever. Say I want to print it exactly the way I see it here. And I've already calibrated my monitor with a color monkey photo. So I can assume that my monitor is indeed displaying colors accurately so that whatever changes I do via editing are actually meaningful. If my color is off to begin with on my monitor, you could imagine that any change that I make, even a minute change, would be really irrelevant at all. It would not be, you know, representative of what the printer might actually be receiving. All right, I hope that was clear. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the print module. And of course, I have a horizontal image, so I would want to switch over to landscape. And as you can see, it is incredibly cropped, is it not? Okay, so I can either do this and just print that little window or reach down at the bottom and hit scale to fit media. So this is a four by six piece of paper that I have already chosen prior to doing this. And of course, now I'm having the, as you can see right here, Photoshop is managing colors. Well, wait a minute. I thought we wanted the printer to manage color. Okay, let's go ahead and choose that. So we'll go to the printer and exactly what I did before will still stand. I have paper type, high photo printing, color intensity manual adjustment, and I'm going to adjust my parameters here depending on how my original test print comes out. And then I would hit print. Boom. And then I would wait for the print to come out and determine whether that print faithfully matches my monitor. Now, it's not going to match it exactly the same. It is impossible. This is a backlit type display, so it's going to appear bright brighter, more contrasty, more saturated, with a higher dynamic range than any print could possibly provide you, especially if something viewed by reflective light will never give you the dynamic range or the ability to really show shadow details the way that a monitor can actually display them to you. So keep that in mind and do not lose any sleep over that. It's the final print that actually matters. You look at your print under the correct lighting conditions and make slight adjustments. You can either do those adjustments inside the printer driver or you can do them back in Photoshop. Now, for a more accurate experience, you would want to use an ICC profile. So you would go to Photoshop Matches Colors and now you're presented with a choice. And you click here. These are all the profiles that I have. You can see I have tons of them. But for this, we'll just go ahead and use the Pro 10, which is the printer that we are featuring. And I'm going to go ahead and use my Paper Pro Luster, Photo Paper Pro Luster. And the 1 slash 2 refers to quality. I'm going to choose my rendering intent. Relative colorimetric tends to reproduce colors that are in gamut accurately. And it will actually drag in any out of gamut colors, sort of shove them into that gamut little bubble, if you will. Perceptual will just shift everything over into gamut. 
so that the printer can at least reproduce something that is being sent to it. It may not be as accurate as relative colorimetric. If I have skin tones, if I'm doing portraiture, I will use relative because it will not shift anything that's already in gamut and hopefully my skin tones will be in gamut and so therefore they would not be shifted over as other colors are being brought in. So it's not a linear shift like this one is. This one's great for landscapes where color accuracy is not really that important. Just as long as everything looks beautiful, you are fine. And this will bring all the colors that are outside of gamut inside the printer's gamut and you will be able to have a quite nice rendition of your landscape but for skin tones anything that has to be kept pretty accurate i tend to go with relative and there's a way to soft proof all of these things and uh, i will show you that in another video okay so at this point i would have my correct paper profile chosen now i have to do something before i'm able to do this in expect accuracy i have to tell the printer driver to no longer control color and again i do that and exactly in the same tab color intensity manual adjustment I go to matching and I hit none at that point the driver will no longer interfere with color management and Photoshop will be sending this image and it will map the colors according to the inks and the paper that I have chosen to use and the printer model that I have chosen to use and it will try to do as accurate a job as it possibly can okay it's not going to be perfection either please don't expect an icc profile to automatically magically produce a perfect superbly matched value for value print there are other ways to go beyond that and i think i covered that in one of my previous videos but i'm going to go ahead and do a specific video on that subject alone at a later date all right so at this point you will simply hit print and you're good to go make sure you have black point compensation clicked and that deals with the blackest black that the printer is going to map that darkest shadow and nothing else here that i need to print i of course i want it to fit my media so i'm going to hit scale to media otherwise i have to then manually enter measurements and then i would just hit print and that would be it now it would be printing letting photoshop manage colors in mapping my values that I sent to it from this particular image via an ICC profile. All right, so now if I want to see basically what it's gonna look like, I'm gonna go ahead and hit match print colors. Gamut warning will tell me if anything is out of gamut, show paper white. This will actually take into account the actual base color of the paper. So this is what it's going to look like when you print it. Compare that to this, this is a little bit brighter than this and remember I told you that reflectance type prints in other words prints that are viewed via a reflective light source will never appear as bright as an image being displayed through a backlit source like an LCD screen is take a look at that that's without and that's with that's including the ICC profile effect the paper effect and match print colors it's not really that much of a difference. Now, again, you could do this in Photoshop and actually make an adjustment or custom adjustments to what this image looks like through the ICC profile. And that way you go a step beyond the regular control or automatic control that an ICC profile provides. And you can actually make custom adjustments. And if you're a real top of the line printer, an experienced printer, this is the kind of workflow that you would then follow. Okay, that is it for now.